Hi everyone, it's Rendon with TJ Free. In this video, we're going to go over the path effects in Inkscape 1.0. These are also called LPEs, which stands for Live Path Effects. This is the path effect dialog. We get to by going to path and path effects. And we have to have a path to apply this to. So if you don't understand nodes and maybe like drawing with this Bezier curve tool, if that's something you're kind of confused about, then these path effects might confuse you. You may want to go in and kind of polish up on your knowledge of how to draw with nodes and draw in vector. But if you already understand that, then you're going to probably be able to make sense of these path effects. So I have some different paths here that I downloaded from pixabay.com. I can I'll include the link in the description so you can download these as well. Just make sure you get the SVG and not the PNG because you can't apply path effects to an image. So I have an image right here. And if I click on this, it's just grayed out. We can't actually apply a path effect. We can't do anything. So we cannot apply path effects to images like JPEG or PNG, but we can apply it to uh, vectors. These ones happen to be grouped, which we can apply an effect to a group. But uh, I'm going to ungroup these just to make it a little bit more simple. So to ungroup, we just click and go to Object and Ungroup. Now each of these is their own path. I can move it around. I can get in and view the nodes of each of the of this entire path and I could come in and edit and this is sort of one of the reasons you do this path effect is if we want to maybe move this tail and make it curve up like this we could come in here and do it by editing the nodes but sometimes you want to keep the nodes intact uh, and then make the whole thing move in a different manner or have an effect in a different manner to do that we just left click and select on it go to the path effects and click this add path effect button so these are the different path effects we can apply uh, we can change the view. So there's a, a bunch of different ones. There's even some experimental ones. We can click and it shows us some of these ones that are experimental. Uh, I'm going to turn, turn those off for now. These different views just show the same effects and it's just a different way of viewing them. This one kind of shows information about each effect. And you can also see the information about an effect by clicking on the arrow and then hovering over this information icon. It'll kind of tell you what it does. We're going to apply this bend effect, which says bend an object along the curvature of another path. So there's a couple different ways to use this, but to apply it, we just left click on it. And now it's added over here in our effects. We can make this larger if we want, because we can add multiple effects in here too. Right now we have one applied and we haven't made any changes so that the, uh, our gecko, our lizard still looks the same. So to make some changes, the easiest thing we can do is come down here to this bend path and click on this icon, edit on canvas. There are some other options here that we'll play with in a minute, but we'll click this edit on canvas and it draws this green line horizontally down the center of our path. It's important to know that this is regardless of uh, the orientation of our gecko. It just happened to work out well for us. Now, if we left click and hold, we can bend this gecko a little bit. So we can bend it and kind of create this green line is really just a path with two nodes, a node here, a node here, and then it just goes in between. So we can bend this to the shape that we want it to be in. And if that's kind of the shape we want, then we can leave it just like that. Uh, and now if we want to see what it looks like without this effect applied, we can just click here and turn this on and off. We can also get in and edit the nodes of this individual gecko. So the best way to change it for now is to turn off the effect and then we can come in and make some subtle changes if we want to change kind of the curvature of the nose and make it a little more pointy. We can do that without affecting that. Uh, that effect will still be in place. That's kind of cool, huh? And if we don't want to see, I think we can turn off with this here. This will show us the line. If we come over to, it'll show us the original outline um, of, because sometimes we have just nodes and we don't have an outline. So this will show us the outline of what the nodes are doing. Um, different effects that's useful to have seen. Uh, let's apply another effect now. So suppose I wanted to, um, oh, actually, let's do the, the same thing. Uh, let's move this out of the way. So suppose I already have a path. I can come over here to this Bezier curve tool. I can left click here and I can create sort of a, a path that I want. Uh, let's do it like this. And uh, I have a path right here. And maybe let's, for the sake of making it a little more interesting, let's turn this to be uh, vertical. So I want this gecko to appear on this path and have that curvature to it. 
So I can click this gecko, and it, since this is a different one, it doesn't have the path effect applied. So if we look over under path effects, nothing is here. We can go to add path effect. We can click on bend again. So now this also has the bend um, path effect applied, but I'm gonna say I want it to follow this path right here. So what I do is I can come down here to the bend path and I can change it. So I wanna use this one here. If we hover over, it says link to path in clipboard. So when we copy something, it goes into our clipboard. So if I wanted to copy this path, I could do a couple different ways. I can do control C on my keyboard and then go control V and paste a duplicate copy of it. Or I can also click on it and I can go edit and then copy and that puts it into my clipboard. So a copy of this is in my clipboard. It's an interesting way to do it, but now when we click on here and we click this button, link to path in clipboard, it will link it to this path without, even though that path was copied in, to get into my clipboard, it didn't really copy it. But now I can come in and edit this path, uh, which, is, which is kind of similar to what we did before, but I can edit this path and this uh, gecko will always be along this path. Not all path effects have to be applied to a complex image like this. Sometimes we can just draw a simple, like a square. And uh, even though this is, uh, you may know this is actually a uh, object and not a path. So if we go into the edit paths by nodes, um, we have these handles, we can make adjustments, but this is really an object which has some different properties. If we go a path and then we go object to path, it'll convert it to a path that's just like four nodes with lines drawn in between that can be arced if we want to. Uh, but by, de by default, the first thing that we have is just an object. So if we apply a path effect to an object, uh, it converts it to a path. Well, it does convert it to a path, but I think it still has some of those object properties sometimes because for example, the circle, we can make this little Pac-Man shape, right? So we make Pac-Man, we'll, we'll do this as, as an example. We have Pac-Man here and we can apply, a, we could do a bend to this just as we already know bend. We can do bend, come here, do the same thing. We can bend this Pac-Man. Well, the interesting thing is this is a path effect, but it's still an object. So if we wanna adjust the Pac-Man mouth, we can still do that even with this bend effect applied, which is really, really something pretty cool, I think. We can change the color. We can do all kinds of things still to this with this path effect applied. I'm gonna get rid of this bend and uh, let's look at another one that's kind of similar. This is, uh, if we come down here, there's this lattice deformation. What it'll do is create this lattice. So it'll create a grid with uh, handles in between every point and we can move just it within that point. So something with a little bit more texture, this would make it a little bit more difference with, but you see kind of what this is doing. We can adjust within this grid, we can adjust the shape. So we have a little bit more control. It's like bend, but with a little bit more control, we can just deform this according to this grid right here. We can always come over and reset the grid in the settings. And there's some different options too, like we can mirror on the horizontal, for example. So to move this part, oh wait, did I do it? Yeah, mirror movement in horizontal. Why didn't it do that? This is supposed to be mirroring these, but uh, there we go. So that, that's mirroring in vertical. Oh, it, it was just delayed for some reason. So this it'll mirror the points that you, that you do. Anyway, um, we'll remove this one. So we click this rectangle, add a path effect, dashed stroke. So what this is telling us is number of dashes, we have three dashes for every uh, line segment. Uh, we have, yeah, we can change that whole factor. We can change how many dashes there are. So this is nice if you want to do a cutout, like, like a cutout, like the star would be kind of cool to do that with. You do a star. If I want to apply the same path effect to this star, I can right click and go to copy. So just like I would do copying the object, but instead of going right click paste, I select the star, then I go to path and I go paste path effect. That'll apply the same effect, which is nine dashes between every line segment and a whole factor of 0 0.35. So it looks a little different because this star is sized differently. But, um, and also notice the fill goes away. So it gives us a little hint down here, add fill between many LPE to add fill. I'll show you something else. In some cases, the input for the LPE is only, only wants to be a few different nodes. So in this case, I draw three nodes. They happen to have lines going between them. But when we add the path effect, all it's going to look for is those three points. For this one, for example, ellipse from points. I can click on this and now it creates an ellipse out of 
wherever those three points happen to be. So this is something you see more in like a like a CAD program where you set these points here and then it'll move between these different ones. And you can come in, you can also create an arc. So if you want to just do an arc this way, you can have an arc be like very narrow. So it's just a little bit different. And we can even apply this in conjunction with there's a measure we can search. We can do measure segments. And now we can uh, use these two together. Again, all these path effects, the way that we make the changes is by this edit paths by node. So we come in here, go to edit paths by node, and we can actually make these changes. And then we can see these measurements update in real time. Oh, there's so much to cover because something cool about this one too is we can actually convert this. Right now it's all one uh, thing. So if we move, it'll all move together. It's all one path with effects applied. But something interesting about this measure is that, well, we can come and do all kinds of different things um, to this. But if we go to path, object to path, what's really cool is that it turns all of this into their own paths now. So the, the numbers and the arrows are each their own path. Um, and even like the, I think the numbers still text. Maybe, the, yeah, the numbers are still text, which is pretty cool. But there's just so many um, really cool things that really neat ways that you can use these different path effects that you wouldn't necessarily think of right off the bat. Um, I think I'm just going to stop here because there's a lot to get into. What I want to do is make maybe short spotlight videos on each one of these, like, you know, under two minutes, just demonstrating what each of these do. So maybe look forward for those in the future. But I hope this has provided some clarity with these different LPEs. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I appreciate you watching this video and I look forward to catching you in the next one.